Time to hear from the manager, Aaron Boone, in the manager's report, brought to you by Toyota. Aaron, four pitchers combined to shut out the Guardians this afternoon. Just one hit overall. Just what impressed you the most about the way they threw collectively? Yeah, all of it. I mean, start with Garrett. Um, you know, 150 wins in the big leagues. Pretty pretty cool number, you know, on a Hall of Fame track. Um, you know, this is, I, I, after that first day in Chicago, feel like we've really thrown the ball well as a group. A um, couple tough losses in there um, around us throwing the ball well. Um, but today was was more of that. Um, all four guys today um, really in control and, uh, you know, a good series win for us today. You mentioned Garrett went six strong, walked more batters than, than perhaps he generally does with the five walks. But you look up, there are zeros up there. How was he able to grind through this afternoon? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> you know, I, th I think in the end they only had six base runners maybe against them. So uh, some walks today. Probably the last couple, maybe a little tired, uh, where it kind of lost the, the the zone a little bit. Um, and, but even before that, I thought most of them were really competitive. I think he was kind of being careful in situations with Ramirez. And, you know, Jose was laying off a lot of pitches. Um, Brennan outlasted him in a long at bat where uh, he misfired on the 3-2 eventually. Um, but I don't think it was necessarily from a lack of command. I think it was just... You know, some spots where he he kind of picked his spots to challenge, and then the last two were probably he was getting towards the end. We talk so much about Juan Soto, Aaron Judge, but what could a hot John Carlos Stanton bat mean for this team down the stretch? Yeah, I mean he's huge in the middle. Him and him and Austin now, you know, and really, you know, obviously today they they walked. Judgey the one time Austin had a really good at bat for the sack fly, you know, almost broke it open and almost found the gap there. And then G kind of doing G things where not many people hit the ball like that and are able to ride it out. But I thought a lot of good at bats to put us in that position, you know, um, whether it was Volpe working a walk, Ben Rice working a big walk, Labor having good at bats at the top, put us in position to, you know, eventually cash in on a big inning a little bit. And, and it was big G today. And, um, you know he's 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 huge for for the length of our lineup and uh, big swing. Andy and Eric, a judge is on pace for 61 home runs right now. Have you thought or talked to anyone yet about possibility that he could break his own record this year? No, but I guess we're on the on pace portion of the season. We are. <laughs> um, look, anything's possible with him. Um, you know, I, I think he just wants to. Be great every day and help us win. So, um, nothing would surprise me. Aaron, this is the second time in a little over a month Garrett's had that same pitch clock violation. Is there something, you know, that he need, you guys need to go over with him again, or is that an issue with the umpires, or what? Or not all of those? Or each of those not created equal. That. So, what was the one today? So today, you know, typically like. Wells made the last out or was on base. So usually when the catcher makes the last out, there's grace and they wave off the clock as they wait for the catcher to come out. Well, that was the case, but Wells actually did a pretty good job of getting out of there ahead of time a little bit. So at 40 seconds, and he said one more, and by the time he squatted. So it's almost like us speeding up the game in a way we're penalized for it a little bit and then we got a hold up so felt a little ticky tacky to me um the bottom line is if wells comes out of the dugout six seconds later they wave it off and there's nothing to do so it's one of those imperfections in my view of of the rule but when we got it you know stay on gary that answered my question max Aaron, watching from afar, it looks like Verdugo is really wearing the stretch with body language and how he's acting in the dugout and such. Have you noticed that as well? And what can you guys do in that room to point him in a better direction, start to bring the best out of him? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, you know, I, I clearly going through a little bit of a tough stretch. And, you know, like, was it last night he has a big walk, smokes a ball to center. So he's not getting rewarded for some of the the good of bats but yeah i mean it's it's on us to make sure we lift them up and 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 get them going because 
he is an important part to the length of our lineup and obviously what he brings in the outfield defensively and you know how good a player this guy is when he's going well so you know that's on us to make sure you know we're we're supporting him the best way we can mark and brendan Aaron, you mentioned glaber's at bats you seeing any different approach with him when he's batting leadoff where he just saw so many pitches today? not really i think he's just he's a really good hitter that's kind of had some struggles this year um and you know he's really just I mean, for the better part of over a month now, more consistent at bats. Um, I think all year he's he's done a good job with the strike zone, even when he's had some struggles. You know, a lot of long at bats. Uh, he's continuing to do that. I feel like he's making really good swing decisions. Um, and you know, he's he's an important part of this. Especially again, we talk about the. I keep talking about the length of our lineup. He's one of those guys that really lengthens it out when he's right, and it feels like he's stringing a lot of really good at bats together now, which is really encouraging. Brendan, you mentioned how yesterday Verdugo lines out one time, walks another time. Do you see something different in his at bats from earlier this season when you know things are going well for him versus say the second half where things have have not um i see stuff when he you know goes through a little struggle or you know puts the ball on the ground a little bit i see maybe minor mechanical things to my eye um that's all part of that hard thing and art thing about hitting and, and everyone's swing and how just how much of a fine line it is between success and struggles you know so yeah, I mean, I think I see some small things in there that are, you know, when he's going well are slightly different, but, you know, it's small. And is it a fine line in talking to a guy like Alex who was pretty emotional uh, first half of the year? The emotions were a boon to the, uh, the, the dugout. Uh, now kind of going through it a little bit, you see a little bit of a, a different type of emotion. Is it, is it kind of tough to manage that kind of, that kind of personality or, or approach something like that, or do you just leave, leave him be? No, no. Doogie's easy to talk to and and connect with, and and you know he's beloved in there. Like so, no, that part's not hard. Dave, for as for as polished and good as Garrett is, I mean, it seems like in those situations he really he heats up fast and stays hot. I mean, you could even see him in the dugout at some point, still mad. Like you walked away and then decided you had to come back again. I mean, is that something you have to? be concerned with him is that he just gets so worked up about those those things um i mean it's something i pay attention to yeah um he you know some sometimes a little thing will set him off a little bit and and i understand it there you know he's he's entitled to the one more pitch and because we actually were ahead of the clock time like it's a little ridiculous that it turned into that frankly and and i understand it from his standpoint but obviously we all have a job to do to lock it right back in 